City of North Glen Channel 8, keeping you informed of events in your community. Council. Actually, first off, uh, we've been providing, or the police have been providing uh, security for the last several months, and I think uh, it's worked out very well uh, in the courtroom. The judge is here with us tonight, so if you have any questions for her. What I did was, what I, what I was tasked to do is come up with some cost. And uh, the first thing, I think we went into uh, the metal detector that was asking, you can get a cheap one for about $2,000, and you can get a really good one between ten dollars and $12,000. I think the problem comes in with the metal detector is, is the layout of the building be kind of difficult to put it in place. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that, you have to have one security officer, police officer, you know, monitor the metal detector, and then have one, you know, where they're in the courtroom for the security. So I kind of rule that out, but I'll leave that up to you if that's something you still uh, want to pursue. The other thing, too, is we looked at uh, s private security companies and the pros and cons. I mean, the, the pros, you know, you can get a security armed security officer for about $25 an hour. Uh, some of the problems or concerns uh, with those security firms is that you don't get a consistent security officer, and plus their turnover rate is very high. Uh, there's, uh, I think the national average is close to 300%. The company that we looked at in town, they have a much better turnover percentage. Um, and that's probably, when we, if we use that, we'll put it out to bid and see. Um, hopefully, you know, it's a very good firm and they would possibly do it. They do security for other jurisdictions across the metro area. And then the one that we're currently doing, and we have to look at that, is the um, off-duty rate for police officers. Uh, it was brought to my attention just recently. Uh, you know, actually, you know, need to look at see if it would be overtime or off duty because it does change. Uh, you know, the amount that would be uh, paid out for off duty. Our off duty rate's about forty nine dollars an hour. I think we looked at um, so approximately for a year, and that's five court dates a month. I think it comes out to be about uh, twenty five thousand. If we use the overtime rate it runs for a, a first year officer about thirty eight dollars an hour and it goes up to a topped out sergeant which is about seventy two dollars an hour so that's who would be eligible to sign up for those positions so you can pay more or, or, or you know or less if younger officers sign up for that so uh, I called Corey today he's going to look at that see if we can actually the city as an entity if we can actually use off-duty rate you know because we've done it in the past for parks for Mudapalooza where they, they would hire the concerts in the park where they would hire the officers at off-duty rate and I think that's easier for us to do it that way uh, we just have to make sure that we can do it um, the, re the benefits for that would be that we have an actual consistent amount that we can budget for yearly uh, also, it's the officers that can sign up for it, and if they're a younger officer, they make a little more than their overtime rate. Um, but it's that extra duty where if you take, you have to do, get overtime, you have to do 80 hours during that pay period. Where if they had vacation or something, they wouldn't sign up, you know, at straight rate for those, you know, extra duty jobs. So there's some benefits, but we just have to make sure that we can do it that way. Okay. Anything else? 
I don't. Have you talked to the judge? Have what would be her preference for something like this? I can bring her up and she can probably <laughs> answer that. Jim, if you were going to do a metal detector here, how would where would it actually sit and that kind of stuff? How would it appear in here? Detect or put it in. Well, how would you install it? I mean, or would it be right at the door going through it, or? It would it would not be at the door at all because you know for witnesses and everything else, you would have to set that up um, between the doors of the police department and courts and our records, you know, and then make sure, you know, put some lines up and then have no, Buddy we'll come through, through and, and, uh, and do it that way. Oh, okay. As for my preference, I, I guess I would just say whatever keeps everyone safe, but from my observations of the officers in the courtroom, it's worked out really, really well. They have been able to, um, I guess they understand what security needs are in the, co the courtroom and the other areas. So um, the officers that I've observed in the courtroom, if something's going on, they'll come up closer or they'll kind of, you know, go out into the hallway and make sure things are safe. The setup for the prosecutor is a little tricky too. Um, and so the officers have been great kind of making sure that the prosecutor's safe and then coming back in here. Um, I've been really pleased with their commitment when they're coming in and, and working hard. Um, so I would say that the, if it works out budgetarily, I'd prefer the officers. Also, if someone needs to be taken into custody, it's kind of a seamless, they know the procedures and they take them right away. So. All right, thank you. Thanks. All right, any um, other questions from there? I'll, oh, okay. I might do as well we, stay okay, here. Okay, I'll just stay here. Yeah, just in case. Do we have enough officers that are uh, willing to do this? So far, we haven't had a problem filling it. Okay. So. Any other questions? Yeah, and the rate on here, this is like the thirty-eight or the thirty forty-eight dollar rate is just for one officer, and you prefer to have two. Is that correct? Even if we don't have a metal detector? No, I think the if you do one officer and just do security, I mean this this that's building, efficient? yeah, With I think size? that's that's fine. Okay. And that's leaving out the metal detector. If you put the metal detector in there, you're, you'll you'll have, you to, have, have to have two. two. Gotcha. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Yes. Wayne. So since we're all, we have overtime every month in the PD, would you just hire another? I'd say another officer, but maybe hire another two and think that one will stick around, and and that would just be an F, extra FTE that you would have that would carry over to this and other duties throughout the department on other days. Well, that was my thought originally, is trying to get another FTE and have courts pay for 25% of that FTE. But uh, unfortunately, when it comes to police work, overtime is that the nature of the beast. I mean, it's, you know, they're going on their days off to court, uh, you know, so they're, you know, they get late calls where they're here extra, you know, extra time to just finishing their paperwork before they go on their weekends. Um, so, you know, when it comes to police work, I mean, there's always, you know, that over time that even you know it might reduce if they're we have to track and we do track if they're late on calls and then we're showing okay we need you know more officers or if they're doing fill-in for when we're short uh, so that's another thing too that we'd look at on our overtime rate see if you know we can better spend the money on an FTE or is it better to you know pay the overtime for that so that answers your question Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, to answer, I would rather do the ODP or the, uh, I think the overtime will be kind of difficult, but I think we can still get officers to sign up for it rather than. At this I time. just thought if you had someone extra that it would be, a, you wouldn't have the overtime or off duty either. You know, as long as, well, if you had one more officer in your, in, in your crew that could be rotated around different ones and it could well, eliminate that. One of the ideas originally was to add another traffic officer. Correct. That's and, what I thought. And Same then, thing. you know, so, you know, one of their assignments, you know, during the month would, you know, or during the week, they'd have to come in and provide uh, that court uh, security. And then when they're not, then they're out doing traffic enforcement. Work in the schools in the morning and the afternoon. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you, I'll do whatever you want. Any other discussion? Yes. Um, Judge, since that incident, and I know it didn't happen in the court, but the threat was made outside of court, but um, have you ever felt threatened since then? Or um, No, with the officers in court, um, they are really good about making sure. The, the problem before is I think it was just 
the um, things could escalate. And so, you know, I would use my court voice and be like, you need to sit down, you need to calm down. Um, and I think now with the, the police officers there, it's automatically more respect for the clerks. I've definitely said, you know, before they'd have, you know, someone throw something at them. And so then they'd have to come up, get scolded at the, you know, or need to tell them you need to behave, this is a courtroom. Um, and now, just by virtue of having the officers there, I think there's a lot more respect just for the courtroom atmosphere. So I haven't felt threatened. Good. I would be on board for the ODP. Yeah. Anyone else have any comments? I, um, sorry. Go ahead. I, I think we should use our own officers. I don't think hiring an outside company would need to do that. I'm sure it's going to be well. Obviously, it's going to cost more money. But I mean, if you can figure it into a way to where you can have a traffic officer or traffic officers rotate on the court dates, it could save us some off duty pay. You know? I, think, I think you should look into that deeply before we actually do the off duty pay. Bring somebody in on their off duty pay. That's what you're doing. You bring somebody in on their off day, correct? Or yeah, they, it, it's an it's like an extra duty assignment, right. kind of like the Mudapalooza, or uh, if they're working, you know, like the carnival, uh, they you know they sign up, and then they come and show up for that. Right, day. those are obvious, you know, extracurricular things that the city does. But it's not, you know, it's not. I don't make it mandatory for someone working during the day. I mean, I have shift. I don't pull someone in that's supposed to work the road to work court security. This is. Right above and beyond that. So right, but I <coughs> the thing is I don't if you look into doing something and making it part of an assignment, you know what I mean? It would save it would save money. I know you it takes a cop off the road. I'd rather not it's do just that. Just the way that I'm looking yeah, at it. Yeah, unless you give me another body and then I'd be more willing to well, do that. take another body. Okay. No. <laughs> And, and that's not my thing. It's just to add a add a cop, and then you're adding someone to traffic, and you're adding someone in here, and um, and I mean it does cut down on overtime a little bit, but also, I mean it cuts down on the stress to make sure that you have someone lined up for these extracurricular activities all the time. You know that you what hap how, I mean, what are the maximum hours that someone puts in their shift, and then how much? What's the maximum hours that someone can work on these other items, like a concert or something like that? How many hours a week extra can they work legally? I, we don't do it by, I, I have to look into the legal, but I don't like seeing them work more than 15 hours a day. So if it's over that, they have to, you know, they have to give that off duty up or that um, overtime. 15 a day, grant. Yeah. per day. Per day. It's a lot of hours. In a five day or a seven day? Five days. I mean, five a lot of times days. the guys will come in, like if they're doing DUI enforcement, which is grant funded, they'll come in on their days off and do it, or they'll, work a shift and then they'll do a four hour you know DUI right after their shift or before their shift so but I don't want them working more than that because then it becomes safety issues and we definitely have a metal detector planned for the new building when that happens right we don't we okay. should no. we should well no, no. no. Okay. officers uh, I don't think that we, that's necessary I think that's something to think about as the building as the comes planning. forward, you know, when we start looking at it. Um, but especially if you've got to hire officers as in addition to having the metal detector, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. So, um, anybody else have any comments? I uh, just want to say the chief came up with the, his recommendation, and I'd say let him try it. Right. And I'm on board with it. So. Yeah. I think we should use our officers. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. And then you guys figure out if it's overtime or you know, whatever it happens to be. Thank right. you for coming Thank in. You. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next we have Brooke, Community Development Watchman. Good evening, everyone. Um, in the packet, you have information regarding the IGA uh, for us to enter into with Adams County for the CDBG program as a sub-recipient. Um, I've outlined the basic three uh, modifications to this IGA from the previous version. And I'm um, here to answer any questions, unless you'd like me to walk through those changes. I'd be happy to do that. Discussion? 
Questions? It's very informative, and yep. I was trying right. to get a couple of the pieces in it, but. Um, right. Thank you, Rick. We'll see you. No no question. Question. Oh, Kim's going to do it. I'm assuming where it says town slash city throughout all this, will we change to North Glen? It will be, yes. Okay. It'll be, it'll, it'll say city. Um, because in the, in the initial enumeration, it identifies North Glen as the city. This is just a draft version. The final version will be in the correct form for that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. The quickest Good presentation you've ever done. Wow. Right? <laughs> All right, next. I just wanted the record to show that that was the quickest ever. <laughs> Thank you. Don't forget. Very well. Don't forget. All right. <laughs> we'll make up for it. John? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, uh, this next item has to do with the uh, extension of half cent sales tax for capital improvements um, as a budget ballot question this fall. And uh, we've got a, a half cent sales tax now that's in place is what we've been looking at as a possible revenue source uh, for the police headquarters, the city hall, and, and perhaps other uh, projects in the, in the future. But it, right now it, it uh, terminates in 2025. And so um, what we would be looking for f would be to go to uh, voters this fall, ask them to extend it and also essentially to make it permanent um, so that it would not as you, you can see the history is that it's been um, extended on what five five occasions and um, it just you know it, there doesn't there it just doesn't, just doesn't seem to be any reason to uh, term limit it at some at some point in the future especially with some of the projects that we're looking at Did you bring the ballot question? Yeah, and um, I uh, sent this to you. Uh, I sent it to you by, by email this afternoon. And, um, Did you make copies for I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't, didn't think to do that, but I can do that very quickly. That's right. um, and uh, the, only, the only thing that it does say in here that's different from what it said in the past was that um, rather than having a certain date on which it would terminate, uh, that it would, it says it would go without a sunset clause, and then it says the proceeds of such sales and use tax be used exclusively for the construction and rehabilitation of, of capital improvements. Rather, in, in the past, we've kind of enumerated broad categories of improvements, um, but I thought that rather than doing that, that it, this was broader. Um, so, and then the other the other thing that was. Um, we were looking at was that in the past, I think we've we've had the ability to use uh, this possibly for uh, water or for water rights, and uh, we could add that to to this as well for for on into the future. Did you pass his by the attorney? Yes. And he said he was he, he was fine. In fact, he was the one. Point. Yeah, he was the one who added the came up with the clause without a sunset clause. Jason and I were struggling with that. <laughs> you know, as long as it's, I really don't have a problem with it because you know what, in 2025 we're just going to do the same thing. You know, we're going we're gonna to ask for an extension, but as long as it's, it's, it's made clear that it's not a new tax yeah. like we have in the right. past. It's not a new tax, it's an extension right. yeah, for continuation. It's an existing tax, it's been in existence since what, 89? Yes. And, and we would, and even if we were to, let's say, in a couple of years, issue some sort of a bond for, let's say, a, a police station or city hall, uh, that would have a payout period of 20 years or a term of 20 years, and so we would have to go to the voters before we could issue those bonds anyway, in order to get, in order to extend it, and so they would cover that full 20 years of that that bond. Might as well test the water now. Yeah. Any other comments? Maybe questions? The last minute. Carol? Um, I think before what we had going for us was that it would always be sunsetting soon when we would put it on the ballot and um, and then it would have an ending date. So even though I understand why we're doing this, I would definitely put it on the city and make sure they were advertising correctly and getting the word out to the residents about 
why we should do this. Yeah, we would send out. Uh, the only thing we can do, of course, as a city, as an organization, is send out a fact sheet that simply says the pros and the cons. If we were going to do more than that, we would have to um, have some sort of independent education and effort, um, you know, uh, in some in some way. But I think you can educate and talk about, you know, the reason why you don't have, or you put in a sunset versus why you didn't. Right, right. You know, I think that's, I think Carol's exactly right, because people look at that sunset and go, okay, yeah. you know, in 10 years mm -hmm. or whatever it is, it'll end. And, and that can be part of the, part of the educational effort that we, that I think the city can do, just factually why we're uh, not putting a sunset on it. Right. I don't think there's that sense of urgency this time, so. Right. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Any concerns? Do it? Yes? Yes, 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 yes. 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 Yeah, we'll have to come back, um, I think, uh, in another month or two okay. to actually have the council officially uh, vote yes. to put it on the ballot. Right, right, yes, for the council. Yes. Okay. I'm interested in seeing what the last one was that we had on the ballot. The change in the